TT. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll thank you once again for um, joining us and thank you, Jimoke, for this great session that you are putting together and your love for the community. Uh, without further delay, I will just um, share my screen and start um, for today's presentation. Okay. I'm trying to load. Okay. So, can we see my screen, please? Yes, we can. Okay. So, please give me a moment. I'm having a little issue here. So sorry. Um, so today's says today's um, topic is uh, understanding Microsoft core services and features. And I was just uh, moving. What's on the agenda? The agenda is we are going to be seeing. My would would describe briefly uh, Microsoft 365, and then that's. I mean, we are going to go deep into checking the individual comp uh, um, components of Microsoft 365, get a little bit of history of, of how uh, it all began and where it all began, where we are presently with Microsoft. So, where it all began. It started with um, organizations coming on board, asking, or how they can um, allow their users or encourage their users to be more productive while they work, irrespective of where they are, knowing the way the working um, landscape have gone today, that it doesn't require you to necessarily be in the office to do your work. They want every user to be able to do their work at uh, any time um, that they want to and to be comfortable. In essence, what we are saying is organizations were require, requesting for what we call modern workspace. And if you look at the, the, the slide in front of you, you will notice that about 80% of millennial uh, um, workforce today says working technology, say workplace technology influences their own decision to be able to join a particular company or not to join. So, and if uh, um, um, a, a, a person, a, an employee is supposed to join a company, by the time he enter the company, oh, and the, oh hello? Okay, by the time he, he got into the company and realized that they are still kind of backward, and he might even be innovative enough to say, okay, can we do things this way? Can we do things that way? And if there's no positive response coming from the organization, it will as well leave that job for another organization who is ready to innovate, who is ready to move in the pace that the world or the, tech, the IT world is going to or moving to today. So 6% of these uh, organizations uh, um, have or they are able to study and understand how their users are able to work, the amount of time they spend each day trying to search for information that is necessary for them to do their work, how long they take and how it's affecting them 
individually and also affecting the organization that the productivity, the output of the organization is affecting them at the same time. So based on this is where Microsoft introduced the first, the, not exactly the first one. The first one was called um, my BIPOS, that's business productivity, business productivity tool. But then it came, it changed to Office 365. And Office 365, from this slide, you will notice that it has a lot of component, a lot of tools that come bundled with it, which is always the latest. And part of this tool includes Exchange, which you use for your email, SharePoint, that your user use for collaboration in terms of sharing documents, creating interesting and innovative uh, um, team sites for your team to work together, Sky for Business, and then which has now changed, or which has now changed or been renamed to Microsoft Teams and is a whole lot better than the Sky for Business that we know today. So every one of these components that you have here, talk about the, the form that allow you to be able to create intelligent um, survey for users and to be able to gather information from people or even do more than just creating survey. You have the, the, the latest uh, um, babies in town, which is, which is a power uh, platform application. Part of it is power apps and power uh, automate, which is, and flow, which is now called power automate that allow every user or empower every user within an organization to be able to create their own app and belong into the organization and they can do things faster than the way they used to do things before. So, based on the release of Microsoft 365, uh, sorry, of Office 365, a lot of organizations are beginning to uh, uh, um, adopt it. They are beginning to deploy it within the organization. They are beginning to see the value of Office 365. And then there came a challenge, a challenge that had to do with information security. People, the IT begin to bother. The risk department, the audit department, they begin to bother. Now that Microsoft have released this great tool to us, Call of History 365, users are using it. They can access it from anywhere. What do we do about securing those information that they are accessing from wherever they are accessing it from? A lot of them access it from um, on secure location. That is any cyber cafe, their own normal internet subscription, data subscription that they, they have on their phones. And then how are they assessing it? This became a border for organization. And that is what gave birth to enterprise mobility and security uh, suit. Now, why am I going into each of these solutions? If you recall that the first, the first slide, or the first few slides that I've shown just now is showing or portraying Office 365 as a standalone product without um, advanced security feature. Yes, there were basic advanced security tools that came with it. But then, because of this cry, because of this concern from organization, that is what led Microsoft to introduce enterprise problems in mobility plus security tool. And who can better protect their own solutions or their own um, um, productivity solutions or tools that they make available to their users? Who can better protect it? unlike the OEM themselves. So that is what I... Now, the EMS have so many components bundled in it. This, what you are seeing on this screen is just like a few of it. Under it, you have what we call the solution that... Ha because EMS is also divided into its own sub-component or sub-module, just like Office 365. One of the components of EMS is Azure Active Directory. So Azure Active Directory handles the identity uh, of uh, identity uh, management of your organization and is able to integrate with your on-premises um, solution or with your on-premises Active Directory that you have before. Then, also in the in the in this slide number two, 
is what we call Microsoft Advanced Threat Protection. What does that do? It helps you to detect threats early and so you give you a full visibility of how your users are assessing your resources or your the services that you make available for them. Then we have the number three, which is Azure Information Protection. That allows you to be able to apply certain protection on information that your users are, are, are assessing, like email, like documents that is being assessed and shared from office online, from their normal office desktop, and then as they even access from SharePoint and even use their own drive for business. One right for business is a cloud uh, um, story. So you need to be able to protect each of these uh, resources as your users are accessing them. The number four is cloud app security. The cloud app security give you <laughs> complete view of your users access to the service, like where they are logging in from, the devices they are using to access the information, are they always using window or they are used to they are always using mac how fast can they travel can they be in lagos now and in two hours time they appear to be in us those are things that microsoft cloud app security will be able to help you discover and give you insight to what is going on then you can take proper measure you can take proper step by creating different policies that you allow you to be able to protect those data. And the one, the, the number five here is Microsoft Intune. The Intune help you to be able to manage the mobile devices of user that, um, uh, that they are using to assess uh, um, the resources that you make available for them through Office 365. So this is, when this came up, a lot of organizations were so happy that this came and then they are able to apply additional protection on top of their Office 365. Mm. If you look at this other slide, it's just further breaking it down into, these are just a few, like I said, there are a whole lot of other security tools or bundles that come under EMS or under micro, uh, uh, enterprise security plus um, mobility plus security tool. So depending on the plan of Office 365, which we'll get to later on this session as well, you get to see the different uh, uh, um, plan of Office or Microsoft 365 that you can subscribe to. Yeah, come Having on, said that, come again. Training. Okay. Uh, not please, me, uh... please can, can you mute? Okay. You're not a question. I've muted. I've muted the person. You may go on. Okay, thank you. So I was talk about helping organization to secure those data that come or that is generated from the various Office 365 services. Yet came another challenge. The challenge of innovation around devices. Now different organizations are releasing new devices with different kind of operating system. Especially devices that we cannot traditionally manage within our own organization. Because we encourage what? Bring your own device. We want our users to be able to work. To be, we want to be flexible with them. But then, we know we've put a, a, a bit of security in place by using EMS. Do we need a, do we, do, do we require a view to the kind of devices they are using? Are they using what we call the broken devices, devices that are being uh, um, uh, um, tampered with after purchased from manufacturer? And such devices, uh, attacker can easily get uh, into our data through them. So this is another big challenge. And that gave birth to what we call modern desktop. Microsoft looked at this challenge and said, oh, how can we resolve this problem? Then they introduced what we call modern desktop. The modern desktop now is a combination or bring together 
your Windows 10, the latest operating system, and Office, and then uh, um, in tune or configuration manager to be able to help you manage those devices to deploy it generally to your users, bundle it together, and then they can even experience what we call uh, uh, um, they can they can have the best experiences while they use the services. Another challenge that also led to this is the fact that Office 365 is encouraging innovation. It allows people to use these various devices that have been deployed, that have been released to the market. But then there are a lot of organizations that are still using things like Windows 7, Windows 8.1, and Windows 7, as at um, this January, uh, this year, if I'm not wrong, is will be end of life. If it's not already, sorry, end of support already. For to be able to still enjoy the, the sweetness that Office 365 and Windows 10 with EMS bring together. That is why they um, introduced this. They are not saying we are going to bundle or we are going to give you even Windows as a service. Don't, don't worry if you feel you don't have in, enough money to roll out Windows 10 to every of your users. Just pay a token and we will deploy it to you as a service and your user can start using Windows 10 as well. Under Windows 10 is where you have also, or under modern desktop, is where you have what we call the micro, uh, Windows virtual desktop. Windows virtual desktop allow organization with strict compliance policy that does not allow or that does not give the flexibility of user to be able to take their own device home and work maybe from home or from anywhere. So virtual desktop allow you to be able to do that. Likewise, the managed uh, Microsoft managed desktop. So you allow your user to be able to carry whatever device they are using, log into a browser to the, through their browser, access operating system, Windows 10 OS, to be precise, with Office Pro Plus, or Office 365 Pro Plus on those devices and continue their work as if they are in the office. Hmm. So based on that, there was also a challenge that was also introduced with all of this. Now organizations have to buy Office 365 as a separate component or separate suit. They need to buy EMS on top of it as another suit, and then Windows 10 as another suit. Companies started asking, is credentials required? Isn't there a way by which all of these components can come together? Because it became a problem for organizations that cannot afford something that big. Because when you go individual component, it's even much more expensive. So Microsoft look at how can we provide these services to our users, our customers, and at the same time, reduce cost for them. And that is how Microsoft 365 that's how it was born. So Microsoft 365, you look at this screen, it now combine those individual um, tools or those individual suits that we've talked about, the Office 365, Enterprise Mobility Suit, and Windows 10. It combines these three together to give any organization that end-to-end -end experience right from start. So you don't have to start bothering yourself like, okay, so we'll buy Windows, we'll buy Office 365 today. Tomorrow we'll add more uh, security on top. Think about it right from start and start using and let your user enjoy um, these services. So uh, from from the from the from the slide, you will notice that for Office 365 or under Office 365, there are three tables here. We'll just put a few of those components here. We put a few so that the, the, the slide is not so bulky. And the component that still include is include uh, email, email services, your team for chats, in fact, for, for like a, um, a modern workspace where your users can do almost anything within their team's uh, uh, hub. Your voice and video uh, communication. So Microsoft also introduced what we call um, telephony system into Microsoft 365. But depending on the plan that you're using, 
If you look under the EMS, you have also EMS, like I said earlier, it's also divided into sub components. We have the identity and access management, which is a, a product of uh, or is part of um, Azure Active Directory uh, Premium. We have managed mo uh, uh, mobile pro uh, managed mobile productivity. We have information protection, which is your Azure information protection, and you have identity driven security on top of it. Like Windows 10 also. Let's uh, continue. Now, the result of this introduction of Microsoft uh, um, 365 is that you now give any organization to be able to enjoy what we call this. Hello, yeah, it, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, my something. So they are able to unlock creativity by enabling people to work naturally with ink, voice, and even put a touch to it by using that's I'm talking about touch devices. If you look at the various devices that were introduced in the previous slide, there's a whole lot of devices, and most of them are now encouraging touch. So they put a little bit of touch to it. Then organization can provide the broadest and deepest set of app and services with a universal toolkit for teamwork. Your users can do their work. Things are not very flexible for them that they can do from within one app. They can do a whole lot of things. Take Teams, for instance. From Teams, you can navigate to your SharePoint. From Teams, you can navigate to Office application. From Teams, you can navigate to Planner. What a view. Then it also encourages what we call simplicity. By simplifying the IT and unifying the management across users, devices, applications, and services. And also in introduce the robust security. So this makes digital um, transformation journey for any organization to be as easy as possible without you having to bother about anything else. Now, let's talk about um, the plan. Like I said earlier, the Microsoft 365 have different plans in it. If you look at on this screen, these are not the only plan. This is just the enterprise plan of it. You have the uh, um, M365 F1, you have the E3, and you have the E5. So each of them, when you take a look, there are things that are available in one plan that are not available in the other. E5 always have everything and have even the most advanced security tools, the most advanced uh, collaboration tool that may not be available in your F1. So just like this, uh, uh, after today, we will, like uh, um, Dimoke have said, we will have a access to the slide so we can easily go through it, maybe on our own. Now, so I don't want to dare so much on this. I want to go straight into the demo by showing you around the various uh, tools that we have just um, discussed and the various admin center. Going Microsoft 365 doesn't take the management of your users, the management of the resources or the services away from you. Just taking things like a um, data center, provisioning of server hardware and the rest is taking it away from you. So let's see what Microsoft 365 um, um, admin, the different admin centers, what it look like and what we can do. Uh, Please, if you have any question, if I'm too fast, please do let me know. Okay, so this is 
my Office 365 or Microsoft 365 uh, admin center. This is a general admin center for Microsoft 365. And you may ask, how did I get there? It's just portal.office.com. When you type portal.office.com, it will land you just right there after you provided your sign in, your login detail. Most of the time, this is where it will land you. So you can then click the admin. Clicking the admin, I'm here, right here. So this is where the magic happen. Here, you can see even at a glance, the moment you log into your Microsoft 365 admin center, at a glance, you can see what is happening. You can you have a um, quick, quick link that help you to jump straight into the different area of um, the portal. But let's start by exploring the user. So here, under active users, this is where you provision your users. This is where you set up in, in, in add users. You can add user in different ways. Either add user individually, or you add user from a template, or you even link your existing active directory so that it can automatically provision the user for you in bulk. Now, this is the GUI. You can, what you can do with the GUI, you can do that and much more while you're using the shell. For the people that love to use PowerShell, PowerShell uh, um, admin um, tasks or activities are also available. Now, when you sign up for Office 365, the first user or the user who created that subscription, who sign up, become the first global administrator. When we mean global administrator, we mean the most powerful administrator. Remember yesterday we signed up for Office 365. But as of today, or after yesterday's session, I added Microsoft 365 um, subscription into the tenant. So I can be able to enjoy all of those security features. Though this is E3, as opposed to go for E5, just for you to take note. Under group, here you have group. This is where you manage the different groups that you want to create within the organization. By default, you have two groups that are created. One is the all company group. Automatically, any user you create within Office 365 will belong to this group. And then the other one is um, just all company means you can have multiple companies or multiple organizations like bigger company or bigger organization that have sub um, that have people or different uh, um, branches in different regions where you want them all to all exist within the same tenant and use their own domain. Each of those tenants or each of those uh, um, subsidiaries, they will be under this group. But then you have users that are now under, that will be automatically under any of this, uh, anyone that is under using, any user using this domain will automatically be in this group. So here you can add other groups. There is no other group that we have, been add, we have added right now. We will do that in a while. So let's just uh, continue with the walkthrough. Yes, I want to exit. So also, here you can manage role. What do we mean by role? Office 365 or Microsoft 365 allow you to be able to do what we call role-based access control. The first when I said the other time, the first user that signed in have this rule. This user with this rule can do and undo. It can do everything in Microsoft 365 portal. Create users, delete users, assign license, buy, subscribe for additional licenses or add more licenses. Anything, every setting, you have the right to be able to do it. But then what if you have user within your organization that is using just SK, that is managing SK only? So we have bigger organizations that have units for almost everything in IT. The unit that manage the messaging platform, the unit that manage the communication platform, the unit that manage SharePoint platform. So you can create each of those users and assign the rights to them accordingly based on what each of them is required. Now you have billing. This is where you manage your licenses. This is where you are able to see 
all the licenses and subscription that you've subscribed to under Microsoft 365, and you can manage them. Managing them mean in case you want to cancel some subscription, or you want to add what we call digital personal record, that's the partner that is managing your infrastructure, you may want to link them. You may want to associate add an uh, additional adding. So like this E3 that I'm using, for instance, there are some features that are not there, like cloud app security. Cloud app security is not in this feature, in, in, it's not in this plan. So I can decide to go now and add additional module to it by selecting my cloud app security for me to just have that feature. So you can easily see the licenses, the number of licenses you have, when it will expire, how many users are using it, how many do you have free, maybe you are running out of licenses, maybe you need to purchase additional one, or you realize, oh, we have so much and we are not using up to that. Can we reduce the license in our next subscription or next renewal? That allow you, you are able to do that under this place, uh, under licensing. Then you have support. This is where you are able to create support tickets or support requests. If your users are having any challenges with some services that you feel you cannot handle on your own or you've tried to, to resolve, but you can't do it on your own, you can easily open requests here with Office 365 support or Microsoft 365, and they will respond to you as fast as they can. And mind you, their support is very, very, very fast. So you can always rely on them. But then there are some support that you cannot rely on Microsoft for. I mean, there are things that require physical presence. So in such cases, you will want to employ maybe the service of a partner to be able to help you in that um, area. Now, under setting, remember when we were signing up yesterday, we said when you sign up, there's a default domain that is given to you. The default domain will always carry the on Microsoft.com domain. But then you can add your own domain if you have the one you are using before. So this is just how you are going to add it. When you add it, it's going to create some text record that you go and add at your domain host. Take for instance, if I try chavi.net, I have a domain like that. Then say, use this domain. So what happened is, it's going to create, or it has created already, some records. There's the MX record option, there's a text record option. The one that is most recommended is for you to use the text record because you don't want to go and mix up your MX record with what is being created here. So you go and you copy this exactly how it is and go and create a record at your DNS host, whoever is hosting your domain, like maybe GoDaddy, uh, maybe Network Solutions, that the one hosting your domain, you will take this record and go and create it there. Then when you create it, you come back and click verify. So what is the what is happening at the background? Microsoft 365 will automatically go to wherever you are hosting your domain to go and confirm if this record exists. Once it's able to confirm it, it's able to tell you that yes, you are the owner of this domain. It's just to verify that you own the domain. So let's close. We won't continue from here. And you can start the adding and continue later. So just like you see here. Also here you have settings. So this settings page give you access to be able to do some quick settings around your Microsoft 365 services. But advanced settings for each of these components or each of these modules can be done within their own respective admin um, center. So here you have um, reports. When you click report, you are able to generate different reports, different usage reports, how your user is able to tell you how your users are using each of these services or each of these components that is bundled together within your license. So you'll be able to know who is using what and who is not using what service. And what does that give you? It's able to tell you, 
oh, if you are so, if everybody is supposed to be using team, especially at this period, and then only, uh, let's say 50 out of 100 users that you have, only 50 of them are using Teams. What's happening with the rest? Is it that they are having issue with using it? You want to find out. You want to be able to tell. Or is it that they don't need it? So you'll be able to even tell which particular license plan or subscription plan should you go for for your organization. It will be able to tell you the total usage that your user is using or you have used organization wide. So you'll be able to know uh, um, the total storage, I mean. You'll be able to know how fast your data is growing. Or you see that your user are not even doing things. Are you oversubscribing to services? Are you under subscribing or under license? You'll be able to make those decisions. Now, this tab, and then you select it. It will give you at a glance the edge of all the services. So if you're having issue, for instance, maybe some of your users are complaining. Well, we can access uh, email. Outlook, we are sending mail. Users are not getting, is not delivering. Or uh, people are saying they can't sign in to their uh, uh, portal to be able to maybe do things or do stuff. Or the thing is just throwing it back, putting your username and password, putting your credential. You can come here quickly to check what's the status of each of the services. And here you are able to see which service is, is in distress. And Microsoft is also that transparent to tell you how, uh, what is going on and what they are doing at a particular time. So if you click any of the services, you can drill down further. Like SharePoint, for instance. They say it's under advisory. So something has happened with this and they are able to, they are working on it and they will give you feedback accordingly. So that is where you are able to see insight to what's happening around the history is right. Now let's try to quickly explore other admin centers that we have. One of the other admin center that we have is Azure Active Directory. The same way that you can create users under active user here, you can also go to your Azure Active Directory by clicking Azure Active Directory Admin Center and it automatically take you here. This is where it will land you almost all the time. So here you can manage your users as well. You can see a lot of things that you have access to. Company branding. You are able to design your login page that's this landing page each time you open a browser and you say portal.office.com the moment your user put in their username it automatically change what's at the background to maybe the logo that you have put so you can put your logo there you can put a little bit of information on what you want the user to do on that particular login page so that is company branding for you you have things like, I won't go deep into this because each of these solutions, as the uh, session continue within the community, we have people who are specialized in this area and have already submitted their topics. So each of them, uh, there will be days where you will have to learn more or go deep uh, into how to manage each component of uh, Microsoft 365. So like I said, you can create user here very quickly as well. Here you have all your users. I'll just quickly add a new user. So I'm creating a user within my organization. Let's give uh, what names we use. Okay, a moment, please. Uh, let's use maybe like a Mary Uche, for instance. This is what I want. You can, depending on what based or based on your organization's and requirement, so you want to go accordingly. So I'll give the full name. And when you are creating anything with star, is very important. You have to specify it. But other things can be empty for them. Just for proper identification, 
you want to put those information. Mary Uche. And then you can say the first name is Mary, last name is Uche, and I say create. The user is ready. Is that fast? Though you have created this user, the user does not have a license. To assign license to the user, you can go and assign license from the admin portal by going into active user. So we will see our user here. We have Mary Uche here. Select the user. When you select it, you have different things that you can select here and more from the um, uh, Eclipse ellipses that uh, is against the Microsoft license. So I just want to assign license to this user. I'll select license, uh, manage license and product license, and then I'll give it Microsoft 365 license. Then you notice there's something here. You always have to select the location of that user. So why are you selecting the location so that whatever law or the, that is applying to people around that area may still apply and apart from that they want to be you want to, your user to be as closer as possible to a data center that is closer to them so that's another important reason why you want to select where your user will be logging in from then when you expand this you will notice the individual component under the license that I've just selected, based on what we talk about in our slide. So you have things like exchange online, you have things like flow, you have information protection, you have Azure AD premium. You have them like that. So now there are times where you want to remove some things for some users, but Note, on checking uh, uh, a particular uh, license for a user, doesn't mean you can take that license that you have removed from that user and assign it to somebody else. It doesn't apply that way. It's one license equals to one user. User or multiple users cannot share one license at the same time. So you want to take note of that. That's how simple it is to create a user and assign licenses to them. So now the next thing, let's quickly create, see how we can create a group as well. We can also create a group either from the admin center, sorry, why is this not safe? I was safe. Yeah, okay, so I can close this blade. You now have Microsoft 365 license. The same way we created the group from Azure portal, we can also go ahead to create, sorry, the same way we create a user, we can also create groups. So I'll just um, go and create my group from the normal portal, the normal admin portal. So I'll go to group here and under the group, I can select to create a group. When I'm creating a group, I need to select what type of groups, group I want to create. There are different groups. There is what we call Office 365 group. Office 365 group allow you, uh, um, it's a collaboration uh, group rather. When you create it, it didn't just create a group. It's not just for email distribution. It's for collaboration because the moment you create Office 365 group, it provision a mailbox for that group. It provision a team site for that group. It added add a one drive for business for the group. So you can use the group to collaborate or to communicate with each other. For instance, if you are running a project, you can create an Office 365 group. So everything you share with that group will be in one location. Distribution group is our normal traditional groups that we used to create in the uh, olden day, in the uh, likes of Exchange 27, Exchange 2010, and even Exchange 2013. Once it is not of its 365, 
you don't have of the, this type of group. Only of his 365 or Microsoft 365 have this type of group. So this one is just for you to distribute email only and nothing more. This is the same way you create a mail enabled distribution group in your AD. You can do that as well. And you can create security group. Security group is just to contain uh, or to group users who need access to the same resources or who, who have similar requirements or permission that you want to assign to them. So we can create, we are going to create Microsoft 365 group and I'll click next. We'll give it a name. Uh, let's give it Office 365 or M365. M365 deployment group. Deployment. Mm -hmm. Give it a description. Just click next. It's not necessary. Then you need to always select group owner because you want somebody to be in charge of managing that group. As we don't have much user currently, we will select Mary Uche as the owner of the group. Multiple user can own the group at the same time. It means multiple user can manage the group. They can add users as they want. They can remove users when it's no longer required. They can um, create uh, maybe channel for the group later and distribute things to the group. So we just have one group owner. Then we need to specify the group email. That will be M365 deployment. So you can make it either a private group or a public group. Private public group means anyone will be able to see the group and then they can join because it's, it's like it's open. But private group, only the group admin will be able to add member to that group. So, and that is that about creating group. Simple. And we are done creating the group. So I showed us how to assign license earlier. And um, now there are also other admin um, admin center that you can um, explore or access. If you want to manage mailboxes, it has where you go and manage that. This place is just for you to manage users and group, just like you go to your Azure Active Directory. You have Exchange Exchange Admin Center as well. Under Exchange Admin Center is where you can create um, things like shared mailbox. You can create uh, permission. You can configure mail flow. That's maybe you don't want some of your users to be able to send mail to some domain. You can create a rule here that block them. Or you have some other um, um, some services on-prem or somewhere else like Exchange Server on-prem. You can create connector or somewhere else that you want mails to be delivered to maybe securely. You can create connectors here yeah, to be able to take those emails from your user to take it to the destination where you want them to go. Maybe your partner organization. This is where you manage uh, exchange resources or exchange services. So, but take notes. If we go to mailbox here, you cannot create mailbox here like you can do for group. You can create group, you can create contacts, you can create resource mailboxes, but user mailboxes you cannot create. The only way to create a user mailbox is by assigning, creating a user either in Azure Active Directory or in Office 365 admin portal and assigning licenses to them. The moment you assign license to a user, it will provision the mailbox of that user, and you can now see the user here for you to be able to manage the property of each of those mailboxes. If you want to do things like hybrid, for instance, this is where you come to initiate it. So you configure your hybrid, 
Bye. So we also have SharePoint Admin Center. Now, the group that we created earlier, that's this group. If we go to SharePoint Admin Center, we'll see the corresponding team site that has been created for it. So this is the SharePoint Admin Center. This is where you can create sites. You can then create policy that protect and, and apply protection to uh, information or document that is being shared here. Now, this is that group that we created, and this is the team site that is created for it. You can open this team site like you open any, any um, SharePoint site. So, and then you can start doing things. So, this is correct because I've only created it. Uh, my name, the person logging on right now, is John Miller. John Miller is not a member of that group. That's why I'm getting this. So I can request access and it will go to the admin of the group who will now allow me or add me to the group for me to be able to access it. So that's fine. So you can do things within the admin center here. You can create, um, check the settings here as well. And what can you do here really on that setting? You can set things, maybe your user, you want them to be able to send, e um, collaborate or share documents from SharePoint to external party or external people, or you don't want, you can make those choices around this area. So it's taking time. Uh, so we just move to another um, area. Now, what about managing devices? That comes under in tune. So for you to do that, you need to go to the address portal.azure.com and you will log in with your same global administrator. Once you log in, you can search here for anything and it will bring it up for you. So I will just type in team and I'll select it. So I want to go now to manage in team services. So these are all configurables as a concern in team. Like I said earlier, there are people who uh, um, deep dive into each of the or, or the component of Intune and how you can apply it or use it within your organization once you have the license. So I won't go um, too far into it. You can do what we call conditional tests that allow you or where you specify policies that say when my user is in is within our premise, let them be able to work freely or anytime they go home and they are accessing Microsoft 365 services from any other internet service provider, let them provide what we call second level of, of authentication. So like multi-factor authentication. You want to put those conditions um, around or in place for your user. So that is that about managing devices. Also here, if I go back to uh, the home, I can look for information protection. So Azure information protection. Likewise, I can configure um, policy on for documents, for emails, whether I want to encrypt messages before they go out, or I want to be able to classify document like when and the finance department is working on document, maybe every time they create a document, that document should be tagged as confidential. And then once it is tagged as confidential, what will happen to such document? If a user from the same department now decide to send that document out to somebody in another department, what will happen to it? You can configure policies that say, okay, um, block this or when anybody that they send that document to let the person not be able to print let the person not be able to copy content from it let the person not be able to um, download that document is will only be able to view it so this is where the admin portal for azure information protection where you can create those policy so We've talked about in team, we've talked about Active Directory, Admin Portal, 
We talk about um, Azure Information Protection Admin Portal. We've talked about Exchange Admin Portal. We've talked about SharePoint. We've touched almost everything that uh, we have here. Though there are a lot of, if you look here, you will notice there's also what we call security and compliance. Let's leave that for uh, another day. That's a topic for another day. So I won't bother going into that. So if you talk about team as well, somebody may say, oh, but we didn't see the Teams Admin Center. You also have where you manage teams as well. You create policies. You can tell there whether your users will be able to communicate with external domains or you want to allow certain domains to be um, to be able to share chat with your users within your organization. How you want your user to do their meetings. This is where you create all of those policies. You can create teams within here. When a team is created, what kind of policy do you want to be applied to it? You can create that here. Now, this is also as a result of the group that was created earlier. So this is a team site that was created, a, a team, teams rather, that was created also for that Office 365 group we created earlier. So user can use it to quickly say do meeting and um, share information with each other. You can even go as far as enabling how user, how other applications will integrate with your teams. Whether you want your users, especially the developers, to be able to create teams application and integrate it with teams for user, for other users to be able to consume. This is where you do all of that. So um, I think that is all I have for you today. I don't know if uh, there are questions you want me to answer. So thank you very much for listening. OK, so, so we can take we can questions. Take questions. Mm, I think there was some that was and then we'll be able to answer as of the text we do. Okay. With off body. Mm. Yes. Yes. I think we we maybe to answer that. Except in the trunk yeah. light and lights, TT. Okay, let me see. How do you how do one manage license with respect to off body? That is if they want to remove the users maybe remove license from the user. So think. Okay, okay so for that, um, it is recommended that a user that already have a license in Office 365, okay, let's treat it this way. This user is leaving your organization today. And since he's leaving, another person is going to take over. Even if another person is not taking over, I want to release that license. So how do you manage? You need to do some things before you can remove that license from the user. The moment you remove license from a user, the database, sorry, the mailboxes and every data or some data, not uh, OneDrive, OneDrive data and SharePoint data will not be deleted immediately. But mailbox will be deleted immediately, though you have a period of 30 days to recover that mailbox if you still need it. So before you can remove a license, Microsoft recommend to do maybe a backup or convert the user to a shared mailbox so that you can preserve his mailbox. But that will be dependent on your organization requirement. So some organization, they will say when the user leave, you will leave the mailbox for the next maybe six months before you can, after that you can delete it. So it depends, but we encourage or Microsoft recommend don't just remove license from a user without doing taking the necessary step by backing up the data. Um, any other question? Uh, yeah. So there's no other question. Um, I think. Um, it's already time and I thank you once again everyone for joining this call. Um, if there's still any other question, you can always paste in the chat window and then we'll be able to answer you. 
for our recordings, um, it's you visit our YouTube channel and then you'll be able to see all of these recordings. Also, I will implore that um, you also fill our evaluation form for us to be able to know what next topic you want us to discuss after the series. Although we have mapped out for the period of two weeks that we have topics. Also, some of those topics are also going to be in line with what CT is going to say because majorly she's going to be focusing more after this M365 to focus more on talking about the Office 365 component. Now, from next week, we will be taking more, we'll be going deep dive into the um, the EMS component of things. So we'll be talking more around that from next week. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to put it in the chat window and also visit our site. Also, kindly fill our evaluation form. It is very important. We would like you to fill our evaluation. And once again, thank you all for taking our time to be on this call. We hope the same time next week you will be available to be on the same call with us with the next topic that we have. Um, I think from my end, I'll be saying thank you and do have a good night rest. Also, keep safe, try to keep safe and also stay protected while you are at it. And I mean stay protected, I mean make sure your network is protected from every form of um, attacks because we know the attackers are not asleep at this period. So while you stay safe, stay protected at the same time. Thank you once again for joining the call. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.